Simple Sumo is an educational toy version of a mini sumo robot. Uh, it's made simplified, basically. The intent of the robot is to find its opponent and push it out of the ring without getting found and pushed out first. So my intent with the project was to lower the barrier to entry to play the game of mini sumo by designing a robot that's it's affordable and easy to use and mechanically reliable. But also, I, w I wanted it to have easy mechanical modifications, which makes it easier to experiment and, and learn more about your, your robot. Um, so in this video, I'm showing off some of the things you can do, some of the mods I've designed. Here I've got Legos on the roof. I've got uh, pennies used for distributing the weight. I've got, uh, I've just got all kinds of little servos and things you can add on to, um, to make your robot compete better or just function as a toy outside of simply being a sumo robot. Like in this case he's following a line. And here I've got a remote control, I've got a distraction flag, and then I made some tires of different materials. And I made my slides go way too fast. But in all cases all these all this all the code and the design files are shared open source. So if you want to try and make a better version and share it out there you're welcome you're welcome to do it. So here I'm doing what I call the Clean Sweep Challenge. Uh, it's the same program as the regular sumo battle program. It's just, it's written so that the robot is always in one of five states. So it starts out in kind of an idle state, waiting for a signal to go, and then it counts down five seconds. And then after that, it follows a program in a continuous loop where it gathers information and then acts on it. Uh, staying inside the ring is it's, takes a higher precedence level than, than attacking your opponent, which takes a higher precedence level than, um, than being in a searching state. Here I show, I kind of got the, the flow chart to explain it better. But the program is set to have it wait and not do anything until you press the button on the front, uh, and then it'll do a countdown to begin uh, the battle. Uh, that's that's listed in the rules of uh, sumo. It has to wait five seconds before it starts. So the way that I like to play is I put two players. I get a poster board and I divide the line and then say, okay, you can place your robot anywhere you want on your side. You can't look at the other person. And then we hit go at the same time and we lift it off and go. So that way it adds another competitive strategic element to the game that's based on uh, on the way the player plays. So uh, so let's let's. Just uh, since it's just me, I'll just have him face off this way. I'll press him at the same time. There we go. Oh, and you can't have it oops, too close to the edge of something, or it'll it'll sense my washing machine here and chase after it. Uh, that gray one's kind of stuck in a little loop there. Uh-oh. Oh, you don't deserve to win. What? Come here, you. Is it there? Designed oh, to accept different mechanical variations. Uh, just as easily as you could change the program programming on it as well. So you get lots of different, you know, battle scenarios that are possible. The primary rule is that they comply with mini sumo regulations. So it has to fit within a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter box. So in this variation, I've got uh, I've got a bunch of pennies stacked up in this top to add mass, and it's legal because it fits in the box. This variation, uh, since the last battle you saw, I've got a different blade on it. I've got different tire treads, but this is an illegal variant because it makes my robot fit uh, not able to fit inside the box. But it's kind of fun, so I'm going to leave it on there anyway. So let's see how that affects things. A sumo battle consists of three rounds of three minutes each at most, and the winner of best of two wins the battle. Jesus. It slowed down its reaction time. Big guy pushes you off the edge. 
And this one isn't a structured game exactly. It's it's a mod that allows you to hold a dry erase marker on it, and I'm drawing on top of a whiteboard with edges painted black. But it, what it shows you is its its path, and with the current program that I had written at that time was not very efficient. It kind of went on the same swirl path, and uh, it's just kind of a, a neat visualization. Clean my floor, robot. Oh, it sucked up something big. I mean, it's leaving a little clean path behind it. It's just tiny. Huh. Anyway, the rest of this video series will focus on assembly instructions uh, over a few different videos. And uh, that's all I've got for now, so I hope you enjoyed.